Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, first episode of Hyper Insights. I hope you're all having a great Tuesday morning. And one by one, uh, as we let more people in, let me also set the set a brief premise for what we're going to cover today. So, um, we're obviously flooded with a lot of webinars these days. And one of my first pushbacks to the team when they were working on this was, "Hey." I don't want another webinar where, you know, I just sign up and then it ends up being a sales pitch for that particular company. And uh, so we discussed a lot internally and what we figured out was that, uh, you no, know, it does make sense for us to do, a, uh, to cover a sort of knowledge sharing series because we work with a lot of digital lenders and this space is now seeing um, a lot of disruptions, a lot of changes and new, new trends emerging. And hence, because we are in touch with so many players, we thought it it would be appropriate to create this forum where we can all come together, address major questions that are bothering a lot of us, share our thoughts and, uh, you know, figure things out together. That was the intent behind Hyper Insights. And that's why we, made, we named it Hyper Insights, right? People who attend this series should, should walk back home with a couple of insights that, you know, they can then act on. Uh, with that, I want to introduce all of you to our guest today who is uh, Priya from Zest Money. Uh, Priya is the co-founder of Zest Money. I think most of you will not need any introduction about her, uh, but Zest Money uh, is doing really well. We're very happy to have you here, Priya. And a lot of, yeah. lot of people here today will have a lot of questions that they want to ask you because you are a veteran in this industry and uh, you know uh, you figured out a lot of things early on. Um, I'm going to go into a quick introduction about both uh, Zest Money and Hyperverse so that people who are new and may not have heard can quickly get an introduction. Meanwhile, uh, we have started a quick poll on what they want uh, out of this, uh, what, what, uh, what our visitors want today out of this webinar. So please uh, ensure to take this poll. While people are taking this poll, uh, Priya, why don't I hand it over to you to give us a very, very brief intro about Zest Money and yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Priya. I'm co-founder and CFO of Zest Money. Uh, this is actually a slide that we had put together last year on how we did uh, last year. So we are, uh, you know, Pan India, we do point of sale financing. Uh, we are one of the largest uh, digital lenders uh, focusing on consumers. Um, and uh, I, I guess if you just move to the next uh, slide. So we work with uh, e-commerce merchants. Uh, we do point of sale financing and we enable credit for people's uh, purchases either online or offline. Uh, if you just move to the, uh, so these are some of our merchants. Um, almost every big name out there uh, we, are, we are now covering. We also focus on niche segments like education uh, and healthcare. Um, and we are a fully, you know, virtual digital credit solution uh, that is available in the country. We just move to the next one. These are my co-founders. So we are, we are three co-founders, Ashish, myself and Lizzie. Uh, we have been in fintech for nearly nine years now. So since 2011 and we've worked in fintech uh, companies across the world. Uh, I've also been a banker. Uh, and so has Lizzie and Ashish is, is the, you know, one who keeps us focused on the technology piece. And if we just go to the next one, these are some of our investors. Uh, so again, a very uh, marquee set of investors and, and people who have deep knowledge and insight about both financial services and fintech. So this is a brief about uh, myself and, and Zest. And looking forward to being part of this webinar and uh, answering some of the questions around fintech uh, ecosystem. Awesome. Thank you so much, Priya. Uh, very happy to have you here. Uh, we also have Kedar with us, who is the CEO of Hyperverge. Kedar, can you hear us? Yes, Deepak, I can hear you. Awesome. Uh, Kedar, why don't I let you take us through a brief introduction about Hyperverge now? Awesome. If we can just open the presentation, Deepa. Yes, just give me a sec. Yes. So while Deepak starts, Hyperword is an AI company. We started out as a student research team in IIT Madras. 
and in 2014 we started the company it got funded uh, it's based out of bay area uh, right now uh, you know hyperverge has uh, two main businesses one of it which is known to a whole lot of people is our fintech business in fintech hyperverge uh, focuses on the process of customer onboarding and how can we make uh, ai as useful as possible in this process we are also looking at what happens after the customer gets onboarded a highlight would be that last year hyperverge processed uh, 280 million customers that's almost uh, you know one fourth of india's population that hyperverge processed last year Uh, like in india we are also present in vietnam in indonesia the other part of our business is a, a completely uh, different business which is more focused on geospatial it works with a large amount of satellite images and uses ai to find out objects find out uh, changes that are happening in the world uh, a whole lot of this business is focused on defense and governments we work with uh, marquee clients such as airbus we work with uh, us uh, air force and clients like this uh, to enable uh, you know more capabilities using ai so these are the two businesses that we have uh, in india we work with most of the top digital lenders most of the top nbfcs uh, who use hyperverse technology uh, for onboarding customers kyc fraud checks etc uh, so these are some of the customers zest has been a very nice partner for us i think we enjoy the energy and interactions with them so uh, there is it's not a surprise that they are the first uh, team that we thought we should reach out to when we thought about uh, such a webinar series moving forward great yeah thank you kedar and uh, as the referee for today's more, for today's session i hereby declare that we are done with the promotional part of the webinar and now no more promotions we will jump into the questions now absolutely and before we start i think the uh, aim of even having a series like this was to ensure that all of us go back energized from it and all of us go back with some insights that we can use in our businesses uh, this is uh, you know a series where week after week if we can learn from industry leaders as to how they are coping up with this challenging situation we all would have something to do differently in our business that week so uh, priya uh, uh, i think the area that has got the most votes is an area that's your favorite as well as zest money <laughs> i think in many conversations with you i've heard about uh, you talking about uh, risk assessment and uh, and and how you guys do things differently yeah. so these are very challenging times uh, covid is uh, creating uh, challenges that we have not seen before you know any risk engine or any credit scoring engine uh, was not trained to do something like this so the specific challenges that we have now are one you know even if credit score of people looks good we do not know you know uh, you know if you know you can safely lend money to that person because the credit score may look good but the incomes have been affected almost all companies are going through salary cuts and there are many measures that businesses are taking because of which whatever you saw as payroll happening before is not what you will see happening now so the credit score may be good but the salary uh, you know ability to pay back etc there might be risk how are you looking at this situation at zest money and what are the learnings you would want to share sure absolutely i think this is a great question and uh, i'm i'm actually pleasantly surprised that this is the winner <laughs> of this poll this question uh, so yeah so we started zest uh, and uh, with a view that we wanted to focus on new to credit uh, underwriting and we have over the last four and a half five years actually built our own score uh, because firstly we believe that the traditional scores that were available uh, in the market did not necessarily look at everything uh and especially in a country like india it was very specific to uh you know if you had a borrowing history then you would have a score and if you didn't have a borrowing history you wouldn't have a score so we from the outside from day one you know started to look at all other parameters and actually in this you know situation uh obviously we have always looked at what we call as the affordability of a customer so uh always looking at not just the income but also the expenditure of a customer um and over the years we have built a lot of you know data points around that um so what we are doing right now is definitely to look at you know what 
uh, an income shock like this does to the affordability patterns of our customer base and and going forward right so i think that is definitely something that is challenging um and i don't think anyone has the right answer but i will say that you know given how some of our scores have uh, actually performed historically and also the performance that we are you know beginning to see now in the last few months we feel that yeah i think there is merit in in this kind of you know idea of continuing to look at affordability not just around uh, you know whether or not someone has repaid their loans in the past and and things like that the second aspect is actually the behavioral aspect which is actually something that is that becomes even more important in these times um and uh, something that you know your traditional uh, bureau score is actually not able to provide and what i mean by behavior is that yes there is an income shock across the board um, you know we keep hearing about news of people you know losing jobs and or pay cuts and things like that but then the second aspect is uh, how does a customer react to these things how do they do they really care about their borrowing do they care about their a boring history and the credit score and the impact it might have on their future you know financial life obviously what happens in these scenarios is, is if someone is in deep financial distress you know then obviously there is nothing that they can do but if someone has just had a little bit of a shock uh, then they really look at you know what what matters to them what doesn't matter to them and typically what also we see is that obviously in in lending scenarios uh if you have a mortgage or if you have a car or you know any any sort of secured asset definitely people will want to continue to uh, repay uh so those are some of the other signals that we you know keep in mind um and the other thing to note is that again coming back to the new to credit uh, kind of point the new to credit population in india is very different from what we see in the west right so in the west definitely there's a lot more credit penetration and we have seen a lot more you know credit cycles uh, go through so people in the west are able to look at you know what happened in 2008 and uh, recalibrate or or make a judgment on that basis i think in india it becomes even harder because we haven't seen a full blown you know credit cycle and also uh, credit penetration is not that much but but that also makes me feel that actually in india you know we we will probably not see a similar credit shock especially on the consumer side um is is what i'm talking about msme is a slightly different um animal right now because obviously given the lockdown they have definitely had a extreme shock right so completely zero and we saw that you know maruti had zero sales in april so so i think msme and sme have had different shocks but definitely when it come to comes to consumer retraining models on some of these behavioral aspects becomes actually very important um and that is where i guess ai and ml and and some of these you know uh, models can help a lot more because we are able to pick up you know more nuanced signals around it rather than just saying oh you know what you know someone's stated income or or verified income was x you know now it's gone to uh, 25% of that or gone to zero and therefore this is how it will impact so in general i guess to sum it up yes i think everyone has to recalibrate their models um reliance on credit bureau scores will become even tougher going forward because another thing to note and i'm sure you guys have been reading about this and you know about this is that there is this moratorium in place uh, there are as of yesterday talks of extending the moratorium and one of the key aspects of the moratorium is that it should not impact the pure score of a customer so then you know if it gets extended for another 3 months let's say then we are not getting that behavioral impact into the credit scores so therefore having that impact come into alternative models alternative scores becomes even more important in my in my opinion so so definitely there is a recalibration we cannot go and say oh you know earlier in in our models this is how it used to be and we will continue that way um but we 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 shouldn't completely junk them also uh but we need to retrain them we need to recalibrate them and uh, this also links to the some of the loan origination and supply side you know points that are here is that then every lender has to 
almost start again right so you have to start slowly you have to start waiting for the new signals to start coming in uh, you have to ask more data so almost reevaluate some of the customers at origination even if they were existing customers that you had history on so some of those measures are already i think uh, those are no brainers and people are already doing but something for all of us to be aware of in these times i hope i have great thank you uh, priya i think as a short follow up question i think a lot of people would be interested to know what you are thinking about in terms of what these signals are right uh, <clears throat> so definitely some of the signals are uh, you know i guess around income for example so trying to get an assessment of uh, whether or not income has been impacted at this moment and as i said msme and sme are definitely impacted consumer i think you know we will probably start seeing the impact a bit delayed also so it may not some of some people might be already impacted but most people will probably get impacted as we you know go along and as the economy uh you know starts coming back or not so it really depends on uh, how the uh, you know it's a, is it's a it's a u shape or v shape and some of those things that we keep talking about so so definitely income uh definitely how uh you know whether or not they are continuing to repay on time uh whether or not they are continuing to engage with us uh for example uh you know are they are they trying to apply for more loans are they are they not uh you know some of those signals uh, are we seeing them on other you know platforms are they uh how have their expense patterns changed in these times some of those signals i think are are very important definitely priya yeah, i have a follow up question and uh, you know coming to uh, you know spectrum where you know business as usual which was where you know india has seen phenomenal growth over the last year in this segment and and a very conservative approach right where people are either not lending money at all or are giving money to their existing customer base that has performed really well that has been very reliable etc you know if we have a scale of 0 being the most conservative 10 being you know business as usual where do you see right now you know uh, realistically exist or anyone else that you are talking to on that scale yeah so i think definitely very conservative right now that's that's what um, every lender every bank or nbfc is in an extreme conserv- conservative mode um and that is again primarily because of the fact that uh, in lending uh, as opposed to any other business we do have to you know credit is a is something that happens on on the basis of the origination that we did you know a year ago or if you are a mortgage lender you know 5 years ago 10 years ago right so and 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 an economic shock like this uh, which is you know more in the depression sort of zone or recession zone any origination that had happened previously it puts that under a lot of stress uh so any lender will definitely have to focus on that piece uh, a lot more in these times as opposed to focusing on new origination uh and i see that happening across the board uh whether they are an extremely well funded you know bank or or an nbfc or they are a, you know small nbfc or they are a fintech i think at this point definitely um, we have to focus on um i guess looking at the credit you know loss scenario and i guess the second point around uh, recalibrating some of the models because we do know that you know the demand is always out there so in in a in in for credit demand is always out there um and as a lender you almost have to be a bit wary of the demand because uh you know in, again in any other business any demand that comes through you take it Uh, in lending you know there's always uh, a lot of demand and in times of crisis the demand becomes even more uh, but then you really have to be very objective about it and that is where the risk assessment uh, and the recalibration of models that we just talked about becomes even more important because you know that you know people are obviously in these times they are going to uh take out loans because there is an income shock but then at the same time uh we the risk is becomes a little bit unknown so so yeah so it's a mix of both so definitely loan origination volumes have 
taken a hit across the board um and i think uh, kedar and i were just talking about it um, and i think this data is 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 true that almost a 90% you know decline is what we saw in april um and probably will continue in in may and again depends on this moratorium extension then it might you know extend as a result of that because the moratorium is another thing which is obviously a regulatory point but then from a lender's perspective it does create a it, it is helping consumers that's for sure uh, but at the same time there is that uh, what we call as a moral hazard kind of a situation where consumers who don't necessarily need the moratorium are or are, 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 are not in financial distress right now may also want to take in because it's an option that is provided and so that then really uh, actually uh, skews the repayment information and and uh, the normal signals that we that we get so the moratorium or the regulatory aspects are another you know challenge at this time which is why i definitely feel that uh, yeah if if it 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 will be impacted and loan origination volumes are definitely impacted uh, at least for this quarter i would say april may june it will be a significant uh, low in terms of loan origination volume uh getting uh, you know pace back uh, you know we have five areas to cover so we'll go into regulatory i think uh, in some time i think the next most popular area is loan originations yeah and on a lighter note i think a whole lot of people are happy that they are not getting free calls i have not got a single call in last i think 40 <laughs> days where someone called and asked sir aapko loan chahiye kya you know for business for you know this so yeah. uh, what would you have to say about loan originations priya in this time yeah definitely as i said it's gone down uh, and everyone's focusing so uh, you know there's a risk of uh kind of a thing yeah so this start almost like says it um really uh so so definitely there was a there was a sort of a cliff for us and i can be a bit more specific about, about us that we are point we are mostly point of sale uh, financing so we finance a transaction uh, that is happening online or offline obviously because of the lockdown that that was another you know shock that happened is that uh all the sh- all the shops were closed so people were obviously not going and transacting uh, offline and then even online uh, everyone focused on just the essentials and no non essential deliveries were happening uh so everyone's you know business model is is obviously different if you look at for example you know home loans or mortgages again it's a very big decision for most people uh you know they would typically go and finalize a house and then they would apply for a loan and it takes you know 2 3 uh, months i guess to to from start to finish and obviously no one was going out and you know looking at houses right and same with auto loans if maruti did zero sales then auto loans or new auto loans uh, in april are zero i guess <laughs> linked to maruti so i think it's a it's also a function of that uh, it's not only a function of uh being risk averse it is definitely a function of uh people just just focusing on essentials um cash loans or uh personal loans obviously the demand for that becomes very high in these cases and but then those are relatively riskier because obviously you know you really uh, wonder why they are suddenly going and asking for um you know so much uh, loan personal loan so so then definitely as a as a bank or as a lender you have to be careful about that that risk but most of the transaction based or point of sale uh, or home loan or auto loans definitely i think were also impacted by the fact that people are just not um, going out and not able to you know follow through on some of their uh, you know purchase intentions and then obviously the income shock and the uncertainty that comes in and set definitely you know if you feel that the 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 job market might be difficult then definitely you're going to push out um buying a buying a home right so i think all of those factors come into play uh with this topic but in general as a lender yeah you have to be you have to be a bit risk averse in these times uh priya just uh, just to clarify to the audience i wanted to say that uh, this graph that we are seeing here of loan applications 
uh, this uh, is this not a, a zest money figure this is this is a figure that we have come up this this graph is based on our uh, observations from the api calls from across the board so this mm -hmm. these figures are applicable to nbfc's digital lenders um, and all those people who are among our customer base so just wanted to clarify that for the audience um Priya, another question I had on loan origination, a follow-up question is yeah. now uh, the same graph. If it extended a little further, we would see a rising uh, trajectory, right? Because there is there is a growth that we are seeing in the last few days that's happening. Do you see some sort of a recovery, or you know, uh, you know, in terms of loan originations, people looking to say now this is the month of May. We have waited for a for a month. We were very conservative through April. Do you see some sort of a change in yeah. uh, approach? Definitely, I see some recovery uh, happening, and also some niche segments. Um, you know, where where consumers will start actually spending a bit more as as opposed to where they used to spend earlier. So, for example, we've been hearing uh, through our partners that now you know now that everyone's working from home. And given that this lockdown happened, you know, so quickly in India, uh, and people were not able to plan enough, uh, so people are now looking to buy their home office equipment. You know, uh, so even for example, chairs, office chairs that people didn't have, and you know, after working so many hours and not sitting on an ergonomic chair, for example, and that's you know, and that's obviously a space that Zest plays, and we we do do these type of relatively you know lifestyle uh, slash uh, relatively small ticket size. So, you know, 30, 40 K type of a ticket size, which is now some, something that someone would have never thought about, but now is has become important, right? So some of these shifts will start happening. Um, people definitely uh, are looking to buy more, some more home appliance stuff. Because again, we see that shift where we don't have enough help and things like that. In general, we've been seeing shifts towards online education. That's another, you know, huge obviously topic of discussion in these times. That is the one space where we have that has grown in these times, and people have completely shifted to online education. Uh, so, what does it mean for financing of online education? That's another shift uh, that we are seeing. Uh, healthcare again. If you imagine, you know, as we start opening up, um, people who had elective surgeries or were going in for a procedure uh, put all of that on hold. So those things might start coming back. So what we will see is even from a consumer perspective, we will start to see a shift towards something that is now becoming essential, uh, but was categorized as non-essential, but something that, you know, people have realized or have thought about that, okay, as soon as, you know, this lockdown is over, I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. So I think some of those things will start opening up. Um, and we definitely see those uh, areas as, uh, you know, areas of growth. Uh, I do feel that there are definitely lenders who have a lot of liquidity. Uh, and we will see some of those lenders, you know, coming back into the market, but it will, I do feel now, you know, given how long this lockdown has extended and even globally, uh, on average, it has extended, you know, eight weeks or, or nearly two months everywhere. Um, and the economic shock uh, that has happened is definitely quite huge. So it will not be a V shaped recovery. It will definitely be what we call as a, you know, wheelbarrow, like a slow, slower recovery. And we will see that in, loan origination as well, that it will be a slower recovery. It will, you know, slowly taper upwards and will probably take up until, you know, end of December or maybe Diwali for things to start coming back uh, on track. And that also, again, depends on how, how big, uh, you know, how quickly the economy is able to, to re recover. Because, I mean, obviously the overall... Uh, from a credit perspective, your large ticket items like home loans and things like that are what moves the needle. Uh, so those will, you know, still take a long time to uh, recover and start coming back. So for for small ticket uh, origination like ours, we definitely see that coming back relatively quickly. And as the lifestyle needs, you know, shift, we will see that. But it will be a slower recovery. 
uh, repeat rates, for example, um, you know, something that we do monitor because we are like a quasi, you know, virtual credit card. Uh, so people will transact less as opposed to what they were doing earlier, um, which is also fine for us because we also want to, at the same time, you know, we're still in that recalibration of models phase. Uh, so, so that's what I feel that it will start coming back, but it will not be a hockey stick. It will not be, you know, back to back to how it was in January. It will not. It'll take I, I heard a very good comment uh, uh, saying that it's not going to be like a hockey stick, but it's going to be like the Nike tick mark symbol. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it'll take time. I think it will definitely take time. It, it, although I feel that India, you know, obviously it really, I think will probably do better. And again, to my previous point that we do have, uh, you know, household credit uh, is relatively low. Indebtedness is relatively low. Uh, on average, people have almost no credit or even if they have access to credit, they have one or two credit instruments live as opposed to even China where normally people have, you know, seven credit lines or so. So in general, the credit penetration in China is a lot higher than in India. Uh, so we will see some of the new to credit, you know, aspects continuing actually uh, in these times. And obviously, you know, all the economists are saying that India and China, the economy will probably not go into recession and will still uh, grow, uh, you know, at least a little bit. So I do feel that we will, as a country, do a bit better as compared to the West. But definitely, yeah, I, I like that Nike example. I think it's going to be like that. Yeah. So now that we've covered risk assessment and touched upon loan origination, uh, the next challenge seems to be around regulation changes and adoption of AI. Which one of these would you like to address, Priya? I think let's talk about AI, increased adoption mm -hmm. of AI. I think that's something Kedar yeah. and I regulation, are... regulation is something beyond our control. I mean, yeah. uh, I we made a lot of asks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I guess let's talk about something which is more in our control, which is yeah, use exactly. AI in this time. Yeah. Cool. So what I think I, Priya is a big evangelist for AI and technology. Every time I think I've been with her on a uh, panel where uh, I was so surprised with her, uh, you know, uh, thought process. And she was sharing about, you know, uh, how each part of the customer's journey can be disrupted using AI. So Priya, uh, this is the time when some yeah. decisions move fast and AI or technology adoption. Uh, are, 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 you know, in the bucket of things that can move really fast because suddenly from running the business, uh, uh, CX, so like you now has the time to make these decisions, right? Uh, yeah. More time to make these decisions, I would say. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I guess for you and, and uh, us at Zest, we all, always were very passionate about AI and we are already using AI uh, in user journeys and things like that. I think, I think this question we should think about more from... Uh, customer perspective and more from an overall, you know, financial services uh, perspective. We obviously were, were always on the front foot on this and, you know, started life as a completely digital lender. And I feel that I think people will now go digital completely. So that's the first place to start with. So, you know, when we talk about AI, first you need to be digital and then I guess AI sort of starts coming in. Uh, so what does, what does, you know, this scenario mean for digital lending, definitely, I think digital lending is now the way to go. Uh, I think Kedar and I and, and Deepak, we were earlier discussing that I felt that over the last four or five years in India, fintech uh, was more of a, you know, it was like, oh, yeah, it's cool, you know, it's happening, uh, something that could be the future. And I feel that the future is now, basically. So I think everyone's suddenly woken up, uh, especially on on the banking side of the table and they, they, have, they have now realized that this is the only way for them to go. And, uh, and so the future is accelerated. So what that means is then, what does it mean for AI? I think AI, uh, obviously Kedar and Deepak and you guys are experts in this, I am personally not, but I do feel that also the consumer has also adopted, right? So, and this we have been seeing over the last four, five years or even 10 years that Consumer is now increasingly mobile. Uh, you know, people are used to using um, 
sort of face id you know recognition to open their phone to authenticate their phone all that is ai right and in these you know covid times everyone's doing video calls and conferencing and video calls with their family and things like that so in general video also has become something that people are very comfortable with and i will say even personally i will say that as opposed to 8 weeks earlier where you know most people used to maybe call home now everyone's doing you know video calls so video is another area where we will see uh, you know the movement happening and what does it mean for us in lending definitely i feel that uh, video based kyc for example is something that will become extremely uh, easy i mean the technology is already there we've got the solutions you know that's how we work with hyperverge uh, but consumers will become very used to it and will also demand it right because in these times um, obviously they will have to start uh, applying for loans and doing transactions and things like that and so they will want uh, solutions that are completely digital that are contactless uh and do not involve you know some agent sort of coming to their home for example so video calling is definitely and and when you think about then video calling ai definitely plays huge part in it um because you know how do you authenticate things how do you ensure uh, that this is not a fraudulent uh, transaction and how do you give the consumer that real time experience because that's what they want now i mean it's not something that has shifted in the last 8 weeks but it's something the consumer already wanted and i think banks and other financial institutions have basically now realized that they just cannot rely on their br- branch network uh you know the branch is no longer a selling point for banks because so far if you see if you see you know 8 weeks earlier the way the banks used to think about it is oh you know we have we they used to think of it as omni channel right so there's a branch there's a relationship guy uh there's an atm there's this there's that and then there is you know digital and i think now it's all <laughs> digital because you can't rely on those assets anymore um and people don't want to go to a bank branch you know unless they have to so i think that's that's what's really going to change things because we will realize that the incumbents or even the regulator will have to uh you know adopt new technology and that is obviously really positive for ai because the more adoption there is uh the more you know data we are able to get through the more then the technology will improve and then the better we will become and the more you know seamless the experience becomes then the more people will use it so i think it's actually pretty good i know i'm sure all of you have seen that uh, you know meme or twitter thing that was going around like who started your digital transformation covid basically so <laughs> i think that's really absolutely uh, in our uh, case thank you priya i think i think my marketing team will be very very happy that uh, you mentioned about hyperverse video kyc so i think that's a tick mark for them and uh, <laughs> but i think uh, if i if i were a fellow digital lender i think my follow up question to you would be which is like the most immediate two three areas where you see ai making life easier for lenders now so sorry could you just repeat that ha huh. so i meant uh, which are the two three most immediate relevant areas where ai can make the life of digital lenders easier at this point given the new normal yeah so definitely onboarding uh, and also in in the models i think these are definitely the two areas and then the third is fraud um which were always the case so it's not you know anything um, that wasn't we are also using a lot of uh, machine learning models and scoring in collections as well um because again that is an area that has been impacted uh, quite significantly if you think about you know normal banks and nbfcs they did rely on sort of what we call as feet on street uh, collection mechanisms so those uh, become you know obviously completely digital or telecalling based or whatever and you need to make it more efficient and um, yeah so those are collections is another area where you could see more ai uh one of the interesting questions that we see here and which was also one of our areas to cover was uh, so kush khans is here and he has a question uh, do you think we have enough money supply in the banking and nbfc ecosystem to cater to the spike in demand post lockdown and uh, 
because many banks are looking upwards and so do you have any comments on that yeah i think i think there is liquidity in the market i think in general uh you know banks and nbfcs do have liquidity it is uh, what we faced in and I, i don't know how many of you were following the ilfs uh you know situation last year uh which was you know i guess erroneously dubbed as the lehman you know moment uh, of india so i don't think that right now what we are facing is is similar to that it's not so there is there is liquidity in the market uh, but having said that you know any sort of economic shock obviously has to make everyone risk averse and that usually does lead to credit uh, you know cycles and what we call as a credit crunch the reason for that is that every lender uh, is more focused right now on uh, i guess their recovery and ensuring that the credit losses are are basically manageable because we all know that there are going to be credit losses more than what was earlier the case uh, the second thing obviously when it comes to then banks uh, is that that they, because they have the regulatory aspects of their tier 1 ratio and things like that um so they those you know things come under pressure and then in general you know you have to understand that money markets is just about like revolving of of money right so the more money revolves easily through the system the more liquidity there is uh, definitely what we are seeing and these are some of the things that the regulator has been trying to do is to get banks to lend more to let's say nbfc so then the nbfc is lend to consumers and msme but definitely banks are also uh, risk averse right now so it's more a risk averse um situation rather than a liquidity situation um but then it does create a slight liquidity situation uh because of the risk averseness so money supply is not you know flowing through um i think it will start to ease out because as i said it's it's not necessarily uh, a similar shock as it was you know last year um it's more linked to credit cycle and as we get data about how the economy is is going to do and things like that uh, we will start to see a little bit of opening up uh, but then these are these things are very interlinked so, you know so if banks don't lend then <clears throat> then the economy will also not recover as fast as it should so these are it's a bit interlinked but i wouldn't say it's the same as it was last year absolutely so we touched upon credit losses and uh, so saurabh malhotra has a question that how do fintechs uh, deal with increasing npa since consumer uh, customers have limited resources to pay back yeah so definitely i mean this is why lending is a difficult business right and it's is is very different from any other business where uh, and this is why any lender who uh, you know does not make the right decisions or does not have good underwriting models even in a boom cycle will definitely struggle in a in a bust cycle right so 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 definitely uh being risk no i won't say risk averse but being uh cautious is the name of the game in when it comes to lending and so obviously i think we we are all sort of looking at different scenarios to figure out how big the economic shock will be how big will the income shock will be and what it will do to Uh, npa levels um at the moment uh, people are just guessing it's just scenario and forecasting uh, but definitely there will be there will be an impact there will be an impact on uh, fintech you know lenders as well um and in in these times definitely people who were not uh, you know lending judiciously will have uh, extremely high npa levels and they will they will suffer so i mean these things happen all the time so i'm sure this will happen now as well so we will see a few you know lenders uh, not just fintechs but across the board there is there is there is stress um in the ecosystem that's for sure <clears throat> so great uh, saurabh saurabh malhotra is from revolut welcome saurabh we are happy to have you here thanks for this question we are looking forward to uh, more and more uh, ecosystem friends participating on this forum so really great to see the questions coming in we have around 13 minutes more and so we'll try to answer more and more questions in this remaining time um priya we have a question from colin lobo from cabbage and colin asks uh, can you give me one example of how ai has helped made collections process easier yeah <clears throat> 
so actually we've been using um and i'll say more uh, scorecard based approach or more uh you know machine learning based uh, algorithms approach for collection so we used to do collections um you know completely uh, basically we the strategies that we use depend on on that uh so that has helped in collection so for example some customers uh you know they like to be called uh some customers they don't like to be called they 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 prefer having a text or some people prefer having a notification app in app notification some people prefer email so some of those things uh we we had been working on in general um what we have also been doing and you know those of you who follow us is that we have also been sort of um doing lot of campaigns we're doing some uh you know repayment based campaigns and some of those recommendations also come in uh, in that so i'd say that that is where we have been using collections very uh, sorry ai and collections very effectively um one main point to remember is that it's all about understanding you know user behavior right so uh at the more information you have about how this user likes to re react how this user connects with you um what are they looking for and also trying to understand you know what uh, might be the patterns around their income levels for and what that shock has become so some of those signals we have been putting in and therefore then coming up with uh, different strategies and that we have applied in in collections um and some of them are working some of them are not working so we are continuing to sort of evolve uh but yeah this is this is quite an interesting area uh, that we have been actually doing for some time now got it got it uh just going over to the questions again uh so kush hans from hora at uh, hora.ai has uh, said we have already seen lenders introducing products which cater first 3 months ago my like you also mentioned priya yeah um, can we expect more such products by banks or nbfcs and what are, what is going to be the approach according to you yeah i think emi and emi products in india are, are quite successful definitely as compared to the rest of the world uh, so i think banks and nbfcs are also looking at some of those products um and but when you say emi those are usually linked to a uh, fin- uh, purchase and you know doing a point of sale integration is not that easy and that is where i guess we come in uh so you know that's how we then work with other banks and nbfcs to be able to uh do that you know integration so we i guess this is a plug for us so we work as a platform uh you know we bring banks and nbfcs on board those who want to offer emi products and then on the front end we have our own you know merchant network and uh we are able to enable these emi you know programs so free emi is basically sub- subsidies those may not continue depends it's a um so someone pays for that free emi usually it's the merchant or the manufacturer or someone like that so that so it usually comes from their marketing you know budget obviously we all know that marketing budgets have been uh, very deeply impacted <laughs> so free whether it's free or not that remains to be seen but i think in these times you know customers also know that if if they need an emi uh, and there is no you know they would really prefer an emi option then they will then they might be okay to pay for it uh, as opposed to earlier where the lenders were the ones who were incentivizing the customer and giving them offers and things like that uh, obviously the power equation shifts a little bit in these times and the lenders have bit more uh, leeway to charge more i guess in these times or oh, awesome thank you uh, navin bhaskaran is uh, my colleague from hyperverge and he has an, an interesting question so we've seen a lot of uh, new entrants or emerging entrants in the market like uh, navi for example is getting into uh, per personal loans and uh, there is this big rumor that whatsapp and jio together are going to get into consumer credit and yeah. uh, of course our uh, a uh, famous celebrity kunal shah keeps saying that lending is a feature right yeah. uh, first of all my my quick question to you is as a as a as a digital lender when someone makes this remark that lending is a feature on a scale of 1 to 10 how much does it annoy you <laughs> uh, <laughs> you uh <laughs> to to the twitter feed uh, no i i i have huge respect for kunal uh but in these times you realize that lending is not a feature right 
uh, lending is something that can make you or break you. Uh, and especially in these times, people who were working on lending as a feature uh, will realize that, you know, lending is a full-time job. It is something that will literally, you know, as they say, lose your shirt or keep you up at night. Um, if you treated it as lending as a feature, I think, um, so definitely I don't think lending is a feature. Lending is a full stack thing. Uh, you have to do it seriously. You have to do it carefully. You have to do it uh, over a period of time. It takes long time to actually get good at lending. Uh, even if you think about HDFC in India, you know, they have built their reputation uh, as the best bank because of their lending practices because they obviously started as a you know mortgage lender they created the mortgage you know industry in india but they even to this day they are known as having a certain way of uh, thinking and underwriting and it all comes down to that sort of lending ethos that they started with so it's definitely something uh, that you can build over time it's it's it takes time to build it's not an overnight thing so definitely i don't think lending is a feature um, what do I think of, you know, WhatsApp Geo? Obviously, I think that's um, something that everyone's been watching and thinking about for a long time. Uh, it's, I mean, it's hard for anyone to comment on whether or not they would go into lending right away. Uh, I do think that maybe the focus for them now is more on the payments because obviously, as we all know, WhatsApp probably started around the same time as Google Pay, but Google Pay has sort of taken over on more or less on, on the payment side. And I, maybe that's where they're going. Um, whether or not they will do lending, I mean, that's for them to say. Um, but again, lending is definitely to be done, you know, seriously. And even, I guess, just reading from the fact that someone like a Google Pay has not got into lending. So there are a lot of regulatory aspects also that some of these large players, you know, do think about, but obviously they are best to answer to this so yeah I, I would say maybe not immediately maybe, maybe they can um, I mean they definitely can they have all the resources to do so but it's something that will take some time now we definitely obviously they have been working on uh, you know digital lending for some time and they have now launched their product so this is something again as I said there are obviously few, few players who have a lot of liquidity who will start at this time the only point is you can't do it as a lending as a feature. So I would say Navi is not in that zone. They're doing they're yeah. doing as a core business. But, you know, that's fine. And I guess the other point here in this question is, do you think the current space is crowded? Uh, as I said, I mean, there will be shakeups here. Uh, so definitely, you know, lending can make you or break you. So there will be people who were who did not lend judici judiciously or had over exposure to a particular segment of customers uh, and you know like other things like that so we will see uh, some of those uh, getting shaken up so yeah i don't think it's yes, uh, lending is never crowded actually uh, because uh, it again it is unlike any other business uh, there is always demand for lending it's not a winner takes all uh, product as such we we have this internal joke uh, at, at Hyperverse that you know the day Google or Google Pay decides to get into the get into lending, it's going to be crazy because they anyway know everything about us. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but they haven't anywhere in the world, and and even if they do, then they you know whether they do it themselves or not is a different thing. So I don't know. So I think the way Google, WhatsApp, Facebook will plan this uh, remains to be seen. Great. Uh, time check, guys. We are at 10.57. Uh, I think we have time to just take one more question. And I think uh, this uh, is... Deepak, yes. I think I have a question for Priya. I think which might be relevant. It's not domain specific. So Priya as a CXO who is under a lot of uh, stress, who, who has to take so many decisions, there is not enough data. How are you, one, keeping yourself balanced, happy? Uh, I think that might be something that you may want to share with all of us because... <laughs> Uh, how am I? Okay. I mean, those who know me will say that uh, I, I would say exercise, I exercise a lot. Uh, so I would say everyone should exercise. I think that's definitely something that uh, keeps me happy. Uh, I, I do feel that one of the things that has helped me personally in these times is I do believe that 
uh, we have a very digital business and i know that for digital lending the future is bright so maybe that you know thought always i guess keeps me uh, going in these times it's obviously difficult times for everyone uh, especially as a cxo but yeah i think these two things sort of exercising yoga uh, keeping in touch with family and i think the team has has done really well um and i do feel the future is bright for digital not just lending but in general digital anything if you are in digital uh you know you should just think about how you can become better at what you're doing um and whether whether your service or product is essential or non essential i think that is a key thing to realize in these times uh and i think kunal uh, again did a very good post i think he has it on linkedin as well today that these times really make you realize what is essential what is non essential and uh, i think all of us should really look at our lives and our businesses and our you know friends family everything in that mode 